Let me bring in Professor Robert Harcourt, who heads the Marine Predator Research Group at Macquarie University. Thanks so much for joining us, Robert. Um, we know from surveys of no, certainly evening, some Chris. species that uh, some shark numbers are increasing, the, the adult, uh, adult counts of some shark numbers. Is it a simple fact that with the growing population of both sharks and people, we're going to have more attacks, more incidents? No, that's, it's a complex question, Chris. I mean, I think one of the things we've got to take into account, it's not just that there's more people, but that we're actually in the water a lot more than we used to be. We've got good wetsuits and people swim all year round. And so we're spending a lot more time in the water. Lots more people surf. When I was growing up, surfing was like it's almost a fringe group. You know, we were some of the very few. And now it's a, you know, it's a mainstream family event. And so there's lots and lots of people in the water. And also, of course, the conditions around our coast are changing. The waters are getting warmer down the east coast. And that's changing the distribution of some of these sharks too. So it's not so much numbers as where they are. And, and how long they're there for. Yeah, there have been a few attacks in Sydney Harbour over uh, recent years, uh, not fatal, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, so far, but so many people use Sydney Harbour, uh, yet we know that there are a lot of bull sharks. Are they the most common shark in Sydney Harbour? And they don't, do they make it a dangerous place to swim? Yeah. Well, they're there and they've always been there in the summer. I mean, they come down when the water's above about 21 degrees and so... You know, if, if the water's warm, you know there's a good chance that there's going to be bull sharks in the harbour. They come down from North Queensland, they spend their time down here in the summer and then they go back up north. And, you know, they're spending longer here because the waters in the harbour are, are, are staying warmer for longer. Um, but they've always been there. They're always around the harbour. It's really a matter of... Um, I mean, they move around the harbour a lot. There's some, been some great work by DPI Fisheries and some students working with them. Um, looking at how, when it rains, they all move to anticipate where fish are moving and, and then they come back and they spend their hot days down in the deep hollows, but then they come up at night. So we know they're there. It's, um, if you want to avoid them, I mean, stay inside the, the netted areas or um, don't swim at dawn and dusk inside the harbour or at night. That's when they're, they're most likely to probably make a mistake when they bite you, but, I mean, they do a lot of damage. They're a large predator. Well, history is a guide, isn't it? You know, there's uh, the shark, uh, shark Island in Sydney Harbour and the Shark Beach is referred to and there are a number of netted places. They're obviously the, the safe places to swim and if you're in the harbour uh, in other places, you are being exposed to a risk. The, I mean, the, the sharks are certainly there. I mean, the, the shark bites in Sydney Harbour are really rare. There's only been four over the last 25 years and now, like you said, none of them have been fatal. But the thing is... You don't want to get bitten because even a non-fatal bite can injure you forever. That poor girl uh, last night, I mean, her, she's been bitten quite badly on her lower leg and she'll, she'll be um, scarred for that um, and possibly even more for, for a long, long time. It's yeah, sad. let's uh, wish her all the best. And thank you, Robert Harcourt, for joining us. I appreciate it.